Welcome to Sickbackers YouTube channel. I'm Steve and today we've got another install going on in the Whiskey Project back here. And I told you guys from the beginning, if you've been watching the videos on this build, that we're doing different stuff on this bike than we actually did on the 14 Street Glide last time. This build's got a bunch of different parts going on it. I didn't want to rebuild the same bike twice. And we've got some cool stuff going on today. I'm going to walk you through from start to finish on a fast up rear air ride system from Dirty Air. If you're dead set on getting an air ride kit, make sure to check out the Dirty Air stuff. They have a very user-friendly website, guys. They have different kits that you can get and different stuff that you can get. If you're on there and you have questions, give them a call like I did. I, I called them up. They answered all the questions that I needed answered. Uh, they were very knowledgeable about their parts and what's going on with the air ride system. They've been around for a while, guys. Uh, most of you have probably already heard of them. So today, I'm going to cut a lot of the mumbo-jumbo talking because this is going to be kind of a lengthy video anyway. Uh, so let's get right into the install. As you can see, laid out here on the table is the stuff that we have for the fast up rear air ride only. This is going to be the rear only today. Full installation manual, guys. If you want to check that out, you can read that. It shows how everything has to go together. It shows where to mount the stuff. Full color pictures. So that's pretty cool of those guys to do. Uh, additional information. Make sure that you read over this stuff, guys. It only takes a couple of minutes. Make sure that you're doing everything correctly. Of course, you got the tank. You've got the compressor, the two shocks. You got a couple of hardware kits. You've got your relay, your wiring in this bag. You got your plumbing and your fittings in this bag. And because we're doing the digital gauge that's in this box, there's a little digital gauge bracket, which is very cool. It's gonna go underneath the tank. We've got some more plumbing and fittings. And to boot, you get some pretty cool stickers for your toolbox. So the first thing you wanna do is pull your seat, your tour pack, your saddlebags, your side covers, get all that stuff out of the way so you can really get in there and do some work. You don't have to worry about scratching anything. So that's what we're gonna do now. So just a heads up, you don't have to have a lift to do this. Uh, it makes it a lot easier if you do. Uh, however, you can do this on a simple motorcycle jack as well. So the first thing you want to do is get rid of your old shock. And this 15 has the uh, Harley-Davidson Air over oil shocks, which are uh, pretty crappy. Uh, you've got a valve here that you can put like little handheld air pump and put air in these shocks and they're, they're just terrible. Uh, but there's an air line that goes from here over to the fitting and then it also crosses over uh, in the front of the fender here and goes to the other shock. And these are pushed to connect as well. So you can just simply push that red tab in and pull the air line out. And once you have that loose, you can reach up in there and pull this down and pull this out. We get that out of the way. We've got our air line that goes over to the other side. So you're just gonna come over to this other shock, and pull the air line through, and then you have it. Push the red clip in on that shock, take the air line off, get it out of your way. So from here, you can go ahead and take your bolts out of your shocks. It's important to note with this style air over oil shock, if you lay this down, oil is going to come out of here. So if you've got a piece of tubing or something that you can cut off and crimp off and stick in there, that'll stop that from leaking. Go ahead and do that to both shocks. So from here, I've set my compressor up on here. I'm going to feed my air line that goes over to my tank through the rear fender strut here. I'm going to pull this up into place. Go ahead and get the top bolt in. You got a bolt and a washer. Put that through. Get it through the hole. You can pretty much let go of it from there. When you get your washer and nylock nut, get it on the inside. And I'll move the camera here in just a second so you can see what I'm doing. It's pretty easy, pretty self explanatory where you mount this. Take your bottom bolt washer, go ahead and get your bracket lined up, get it in, washer and nylock nut again. So you can see right here on the inside of the fender strut where we went through two bolts this way, and here's the inside, these are the nylock nuts. Now we can go ahead and snug this down. Now once we get that snug down, the important thing is to check for clearance. The bottom of your compressor is going to be very, very close to your pulley. So you just want to make sure that you've got room in here. You want to pull that out just slightly, just like that. You don't want to pull it all the way out here because you're going to run into the side of your saddlebag. So it's a very fine line between hitting your saddlebag and hitting your pulley. You want to get that pretty close to your pulley so that way when you air up or air down, 
your compressor is not actually getting into your pulley. Now, once you have the compressor where you want it, you can get in here and tighten this middle bolt down that holds the clamp around the compressor. So if you don't pull your fender extension like I did where you can get right in here, go ahead and pull these two bolts back out. Don't let the compressor spin in the bracket. Go ahead and tighten the bracket down on the compressor and put it back on. And once you have everything where you want it, go ahead and tighten that down on the compressor. It's not going anywhere. It's not gonna get into your pulley. So I've pulled this hose underneath the fender here, brought it up through here, and I'm gonna attach it to the bottom of this tank. I'm gonna get this torque down. Then, you can just kind of push the air line back through, put it up into place, grab our bolt and washer, put it through, It'll pretty well hold it for us. Just like the other side, we want to go ahead and do our washer and nut. Same thing on the bottom. Go ahead and get our washer and nut again. Once again, checking for clearance between the tank and the rear disc here. Once we know that that's good, we can go ahead and tighten this up. Once you have those tight, go ahead and check for clearance one more time. We're gonna take our extra line here, pull it up and back through over to the other side. So I've taken the excess of the braided air line. I've ran it through the inside of my fender. Uh, guys with a stock fender, you've got the tri bar lighting up there. You've got a bolt up in there. You can actually zip tie the line to that. That's what I did just to make sure that's not gonna go anywhere. I brought it back over. I actually zip tied it to this fender strut. So this is gonna make sure that this doesn't move up and down. This braided air line's really tough, guys, so it's not super flexible. So once you get it where you want it, I'm pretty sure it's gonna stay. Uh, I'm not worried about any of this flexing or moving or getting into the tire. Uh, like I said, it's ran in and around the top of the fender and then down over to the tank. When you're putting your rear shocks on, look at your bolt that you took out of there. You've got a flat washer and a split washer. When you put this in, some bikes you're gonna run the chance of running this bolt into the back side of your saddlebag. Of course, saddlebag's not on here, but you can go ahead and mount them up and set a saddlebag on there and see if you're into the bag. If you are into the bag, go ahead and remove that split washer, put your flat washer back on, add blue Loctite to the end of the bolt. Whether you use the split washer or not, go ahead and load that up with blue Loctite. When you're putting your shock on, make sure that your airline is to the top. It goes up here like this. Put your bolt through. Go ahead and get that one started. Put your bottom one in. And once you get both of them in, go ahead and run them down to 35 foot pounds. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this free video. If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you wanna check out the channel, we got 120 something bagger related videos. There's a ton. Check out the channel and make sure you hit that subscribe button, guys. That's what keeps us coming out here into the shop and doing these videos for you. All of our videos are always free all the time. We don't ask for donations. We don't do Patreon. We don't do any secret squirrel Facebook things where you have to pay us money to join and all. Everything is free all the time on this channel. So make sure you check us out. Find us over on Instagram, find us over on Facebook. If you wanna get a hold of some bagger swag, that's where you can find it over on Facebook. We do a pre-order about five, six times a year. Put your order in, you get t-shirts, hoodies, koozies, all that good stuff. But find us over there. But I'm gonna let you guys get back to the video. I just wanted to stop a second and let you guys know that I appreciate the hell out of every one of you guys. Back to it. Now that we have everything mounted, we're gonna start doing the wiring. I went ahead and installed the toggle switch right down in here on the firewall. As you can see, the small toggle switch right here. Couldn't really get the camera in there and my hands and you guys see what was going on. It's a little switch, so I just poked it through one of the small holes from in here underneath the seat. You just poke it straight down in, put the nut on, put your rubber boot on, and you're done with that. Your toggle switch wires are here on the other side of the bike. You've got this big wire loom coming from the tank. Now this is gonna be easy to do because the other side of the bike doesn't have clips in it. These holes are open. So you can just run it along the side of your fender there, make sure that you stay away from your back tire and zip tie that wire off there and bring it up center underneath the seat. Right here underneath your left side cover, you've got your fuse box, your main fuse, which by the way, you should probably pull your main fuse before you start all this. Right here behind the battery compartment, between the battery and the rear fender, you've got a big void in there that there's not really anything in there. This eventually is gonna be where I mount the relay. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the camera and save you from having to painstakingly watch me route all these wires. But once I get them all routed, I'll walk the camera around the bike and show you how I routed them. So I've poked the relay back in here in this void and out of there we've got the red, white, black, and blue wire. The harness coming from the tank going up, zip tied here, 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 and then ran into the compartment here so we can get all of our wires kind of centrally located up here. On the compressor side we just have the red and the black zip tied off on our existing lines, poked behind the frame between the fender and back up through here. I'll take the two grounds with the eyelet right here off of the uh, harness off of the tank and I'll ground it to the same place and that just leaves these four wires here and then of course the three wires that we have coming back from the toggle switch. So the blue wire coming off the tank and the blue wire coming off the switch will go to a 12 volt switch ignition. On your 2014 up underneath your seat it's right on top of this cover you'll see this black clip. There will be this kind of cream color clip, this black clip. This black clip goes back and that's what this wire harness here going back to your rear tail light. Inside that, that solid blue wire right there is a 12 volt ignition. That's kind of like your running light. It won't come on unless we hit the ignition switch. So we're gonna tie those two into that 12 volt ignition switch. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the camera and we're gonna wire this up. Before I button everything back up, I'll show you guys exactly how I ran it and where I tucked the wires. We had the provided red inline fuse that's gonna to go to the blue wire from the relay. Now from over to this side, we have the red from the relay going up to the red that goes back to the pump. Now we have the red from the toggle switch going back to the red in the harness that goes back to the pump. Now we have the orange from the toggle switch to the orange on the same wiring harness that goes back to the pump. So we have the yellow from the pump harness to the white on the relay. So now we have to go to the blue 12 volt ignition wire. This is the wire that goes back to the wiring harness like we talked about earlier. Now you can do this part however you want. You have to get into that blue line. You can cut it and re-solder it. I have posi taps, these little guys right here. So I'm just sliding a posi tap onto the blue wire. And then I can take the blue wire from the toggle and the blue wire from the harness that goes back to the pump. You just kind of twist those together and put them in the end of the posi tap and screw that back down. Now I've got the blue wires posi tapped into the blue wire. That's gonna be our 12 volt power source. Let me go ahead and plug that back in. So all we have to do is ground and then put our positive wire onto the battery and we're done from there. I'm gonna take the ground for my relay. Go ahead and put that one on the battery. Right inside the frame right here, there's a bolt. Uh, not the two bolts that hold your uh, battery tray in, but right to the side of that, right by your frame, there's this bolt it goes right down in here. So I'm gonna take the ground from the pump and the double ground. Uh, it's a double ground going into an eyelet coming from the tank side, and I'm gonna ground those there. And all that leaves us now is actually hooking up the positive wire to the batteries. So the last thing we have to do on all this wiring is get all this stuff buttoned up. Remember, it's all gonna go down in that void where the relay is behind the battery. So I'll use some zip ties and some Tessa tape and stuff to go ahead and button this up and get it tucked in there behind the battery. Now that we have all of our electric buttoned up and exactly where we want it, we're gonna go ahead and plumb the bike. Dirty Air provides plenty of this 530 seconds airline. The most important thing about cutting this airline is it is bendable, but it is still kind of stiff too. Make sure you cut this with something sharp. If you cut this and it crimps the ends, you're gonna virtually be restricting airflow through this line. So all of the fittings that come with this kit are push to connect. I'm gonna get this over into the camera for you so you can see it, but this is like a push to connect fitting here. This is your airline right here, this little piece here. When you push this in, pull on it a little bit and it's locked on. You wanna release it, you just push this tab in, pull it back out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is plumb my two shocks together and then everything will feed off of that. Right above that little clip is a little square hole there that goes into that void where we put the wiring. You can kind of push that through, come out the other side. So once I get that fish through the other side, I'll go ahead and plug this side in. 
tug on it, push it in, pull it out, make sure it's gonna stay just like that. Now what I'll do is actually pull this back and zip tie it in here on one of these wires. This one, I'm gonna run behind the frame. Now when I came through the other side, I poked it to the inside of the rail here. And I'm gonna leave myself plenty of room uh, back here behind this side cover. And I'm gonna zip tie it off here and run to this shock. I'm leaving this slack because I'm gonna have a couple of T's in here going to different things. And I want it all right here behind the side cover. Make sure that you got it where you want it. Pull it up, sharp cut. And once again, make sure that the end of this isn't crimped over after you cut it. So we'll go ahead and plug this one in, push it in, pull it out. So now we have this slack to put our T's in. And this line over here is nice and tight. It's not gonna get into anything, any moving parts. Now we wanna come from our fast up tank out of this hole. Got a rubber grommet, run the airline through it here. Put it in, same thing. Push it in, pull it out, make sure it's in. This airline run behind the shock. We're gonna bring this up and zip tie it up here on these brackets where we put the wire harness from the tank. So that's actually my shortest run and I wanna keep all my T's behind the side cover. So once again, cut. Once again, check your ends, make sure your ends aren't crimped. Push your T in, back over to your other shock. Cut there, once again, make sure to check your end. T, now you've came from the tank and you're tied into your two shocks. So this next step is very important, guys. The kit is going to come with a safety toggle valve. You're gonna to want to make sure that you put this in, whether you're running a kickstand or you're running a center stand, especially if you're running a center stand. What this safety valve does is bypasses the airline. So if you've got your bike aired out and sitting on a center stand, and let's say some debris or something like that gets in there, it's very rare, but it can happen. Uh, and it opens up that valve a little bit and it slowly starts leaking air into the airlines. You're sitting on a center stand while your bike's just gonna air up and it's gonna fall over. So that's what this safety valve does. You want to put this on your bike and you want to flip this every time you park your bike. So you can let your air out, put it down on your kickstand or your center stand, reach in there, flip that thing open. It's gonna create a bypass. The air will leak out here into the atmosphere versus filling your shock. There's several holes in the firewall down here, but none of them on this 15 or a half inch. So I just found a hole that was already in the middle and I reached through here with a drill bit, half inch drill bit, and I drilled it out. Now you're gonna go ahead and connect the push connect elbow on there, a couple of nine 16 inch wrenches. Go ahead and tighten that down. Like I said, it's already got the tape on it. So just go ahead and run it down. So once you get that on there, go ahead and run it through the inside out or wherever you want to install this. This is just where I chose to install it. So I can get that finger tight and reach up in there with my wrench and 9 16 to actually put it on the back. You don't want that to spin. Once you get the toggle in place, and turn it where you need it and then tighten up the outside. So you can see right here where I have it mounted. That'll dump it, that'll close it. The farthest one over here on my left hand side will be your air up and down. So now that I have that, I know I'm gonna drop down just like that so I don't have a real sharp bend on it. I'm gonna cut it off. Check my end. Plug it in, pull it, make sure it's good. So technically from here, you're pretty much completed with your install. Just make sure all of your wires and all that stuff is buttoned up. If you're not doing an air gauge, you're pretty much done. You can go ahead and put your main fuse back in and test the system. Once you put the main fuse in and you kick your ignition on, it has to pressurize the system for the first time. So you're gonna hear the pump come on. It of course is gonna be airing up the air tank. As soon as the air tank is full, the pump will turn off. So now we're gonna be installing the gauge. And like I said, I got the digital gauge from Dirty Air. Then you're gonna have a pressure switch and another one of those elbows like we installed earlier. We can tee off back there on that other side the same way, and we will here in just a minute. But you can just set this back in that cubby hole if you want to. This wire is gonna go up 
to the other wires that go up from the gauge to the tank. We're gonna solder those together and the gauge will be hooked up. So let's get the camera over here and get the gauge installed. Now I've got the bracket that goes on the rocker box bolts, which I've already put on. I've actually extended my back one out just a little bit to kick this out uh, because of the tank shroud that I have kind of covered up the gauge. So I extended the back one. That's very easy to do. Two bolts out of the rocker box, put the bracket on, blue Loctite, put them back on. So when we get ready to put our gauge together, guys, this is the uh, rocker box gauge. With this kit, it's pretty easy to go together. You've got some goodies in a little bag here. You've got some nuts, washers, and of course these little bolt extensions. So basically on the back of your gauge, you've got these two bolts right here, these nuts and bolts. You're gonna take these little bolt extensions right here and screw those on. Or male on one end and female on the other end, pretty easy. Once you get it set in there, you can take your little cup, push it down in there like that. Then you can take your bracket, slide it down in there, put your washer and a nut. A little 5 16 inch wrench, and go ahead and tighten those down. Now the gauge is ready to put on the bike. So now I've got my wire pulled up over the top of the frame and I've notched out a hole in the side of this tray for that wire to set through. So this cap's not gonna pinch those wires. Don't know if that's absolutely necessary, but that's how I'm gonna do it. I feel comfortable poking those wires through there like that. It's gonna come out the bottom. Snap our cap back on. So from there, I can go ahead and put my tank back on. So we're gonna start by putting the elbow onto the pressure valve. It's already got the thread tape on it, so there's no need for that. Go ahead and torque that down. Now remember, like I said earlier, you can tap off of any one of these air lines. So if I wanna tap off right here on my safety valve line, I can. And then I can tuck that wire back there. The wires that come up and attach to this will be right in here behind the side cover. So it's easily accessible, but still out of the way. So I'm gonna cut in right here. We're gonna T. Push in, pull, push in, pull. So I'm gonna take my valve and go ahead and put an airline in that, push in, pull. Figure out where I want it. I do think that I wanna tuck this up into this void. So just decide where you want your pressure valve and then you can cut your tubing down to size and go into this T. Don't bend the wire too sharply, increase it, push it in, pull it out and we're good. So now we've got air going to the pressure sensor here that's going to shoot that digital data up through the wires and into our gauge. So now we have the three wires coming from the pressure valve over there to go to our pressure gauge. We've got the wires coming out from underneath here. Pretty simple guys. All of the blacks go to black and of course that's gonna be grounded. The green will go to green. The brown will go to brown. And then that leaves us with a red and a yellow. So we're gonna ground the black one. The yellow one is gonna jump over here straight to the positive on the battery and the red is gonna to go to a 12 volt ignition source. But that's basically how you do it. As soon as I get this uh, all installed, we'll kick it back on and we'll check out the gauge. So bear with me again as I have this off of the tripod, but if we have everything hooked up correctly and I kick the ignition on, we should uh, see the gauge come on and get a reading. So I've put a little bit of air in the system so we can see where it's at. Forty pounds. Gonna reach in, bump it up a little bit. That's pretty much it guys. Hopefully this video showed you pretty much how easy it is to put air ride on yourself. The biggest thing that I want you to remember if you've never installed air ride before that dirty air provides this book here. This thing is only four or five pages. It is packed full of information. 
And of course, if you run into a hitch and the book's not helping you, you can always call them. Very, very knowledgeable staff over at Dirty Air. So I'll put the link to this kit down in the description. You can click on it, it'll take you over to Dirty Works and you can check it out. While you're there, check out the website. They've got a lot of stuff on there and there's several options for different things. But I'm gonna get out of here and get working on the next project. Until the next video, as always, be safe keep your knees in the breeze. Thanks for checking out the YouTube video, guys. If you like what you see, make sure you hit the subscribe button over here. Over 100 bagger related videos on our YouTube channel. But to get you started, maybe you can check out this one or this one. Just one of them. Not really going to say anything else. Just... just click the button, man. It'll just...